Now it's time for a brief intermission. Whenever you're involved in a real project, take a time out. Now what I did is, after I did yesterday's last session, I did exactly what I tell everybody that they should do if they're truly an entrepreneur. Take some time off. Take a day off. At least take half a day off. So I shut the studio down after the last filming and I went out and I did some walking around. I did uh, uh, some exercises. I went swimming and I was thinking about what I had accomplished and what I had done and how I should begin to finish the class and how I should begin to help you be more effective in making it worthwhile for you. You see, this is not a one-hour class. Some of you say it's too short. No, if you do it right, you will listen. Perhaps you will listen again. And then you'll go out, as I suggested, and think about, you know, perhaps even pray about, talk to, find counsel, talk to friends. You'll begin to say, how can I really begin to bring value to other people? So this is not a one-hour course. Actually, a good course like this, and I hope it's a good course, something like this should be listened to three times. At least three times. Let me tell you something. Listening to a good course or a presentation three times one hour is far better than taking one presentation, one listening to a three-hour course. You will learn more in that way than you will the other way. That's just the way things work. And so I encourage you now, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, it doesn't mean you work 60 to 70 to 80 hours a week, though you will work hard. You will take time off to reflect, to think, to be creative, and to find ways of making those juices flow that will help you. So I hope you will do that. I remember one of my mentors said this, Stan, if you really want something to sink into your heart, mind, and life so it changes you, uh, listen to it at least seven times. I remember when I first encountered Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It was kind of a hard book to read, but I struggled through it. But then I found the audio program in which he himself kind of presented the program. And I listened to each lesson seven times because I knew that that's part of how that good stuff became a part of me. There's a spiritual lesson involved there. It's fill your mind with good things. Uh, that's what God wants for us. Fill your mind with good things. And then you know what happens? Good things can come out when good things go in. So uh, hopefully you're going to think about that as we put together the last part of our course on God wants you to be an entrepreneur. So here I am, different day, different costume, ready to help us discover what could be for us if we would truly decide to be an entrepreneur. Well, let's continue now. You have to serve somebody. Now that is a fundamental life, business, spiritual principle. You have to serve other people. If you don't serve other people, nothing good will happen to you. I remember one time I was uh, teaching this to a group of people in the insurance business and there was young, one young man sitting in the front uh, who didn't particularly like this and he stood up and said, you know, I understand what you're talking about. Hey, but I've got a mortgage to pay, I've got kids to rear, I've got a business to grow. Uh, I'm in the business of serving myself. And then I tried not to be too hard, but I said it in a way that both cut, yet supposedly had a gentle edge to it. I said, well, you know then, I hope you pay on time and you pay well, because you're the only customer or client you're going to get. The fundamental principle of life is we are not in the business of making money. We are not in the business of selling stuff. We are in the business of serving other people. And if we do that well, and if we do it in a way that is valuable and helpful and useful to them, compensation comes our way. 
That's a principle that entrepreneurs have to believe in. They also have to believe that it may be that I'll have to pay it forward before it even comes back to me. That's one of the big differences between entrepreneurs and employees. Employees oftentimes believe if I do the job, I should get paid now. Entrepreneurs understand that it's not doing the job, it's creating something of value for other people. And you may have to do that for a long, long time before the money starts to come back to you. And that's indeed the risk and the challenge and the difficulty in living, not just doing the entrepreneurial life. So I really encourage you to understand that that is a significant part of what it means to be an entrepreneur. Now, because of that, some of you are going to say right now is, uh, it's more than just starting a business, right? It is more than just having a product to sell. Absolutely correct. It is a way of serving other people in a unique and powerful way that they value. And then you don't just get paid for what you do. You get paid for what you know. You get paid for what you are. And you may even get paid years and years past because of the performance you gave and the service you gave to others. That's the deal that hopefully you're trying to make when you decide to live an entrepreneurial life. Now, I used a key term there. I hope you got it. I used the term performance. Once you decide to be an entrepreneur, I oftentimes say to people is, it's that old acting slogan. First of all, break a leg, which means if those of you who've had any experience in the performing arts is kind of the superstition of when you say break a leg, you mean just the opposite. Have a great show, have a great performance, have a great gig. On the other hand, what it also means is you have to go out there and it's your turn, your town, you're on and you have to perform in such a way that people value you. One of the uh, men who helped me was a former student of mine. His name was Joe Pine, and along with his uh, friend Jim Gilmore, a number of years ago created the term the experience economy, and they said, work is theater and every business a stage. If you want to be an entrepreneur, you're going to have to understand that, first of all, the persuasion part. You're going to have to learn some of the persuasion skills. You may say, I hate to sell. Well, you're going to have to learn how to sell yourself and sell your ideas and persuade people that you have something of value for them. And one of the best ways to do that is to tell stories. Let me tell you this, storytelling is the only effective means of communication and every great entrepreneur that I have ever met has been a wonderful storyteller. They are <laughs> full of it when it comes to stories about why they do what they do and what they believe in and how excited they are and they'll tell stories about how they help people. So they're not really caught up in all the specifics and the facts and the features and benefits. They have engineers and people and salespeople who might know that, but the entrepreneur tells stories about how they love what they do and how they have helped other people do what they do. So I want to encourage you right now to understand that as you begin your entrepreneurial life, you are looking forward to finding a way. And this is where the internet has become incredibly wonderful. Right now, I have the ability. I am speaking to people in over 150 different countries. I couldn't have done that before when I was a classroom teacher in a small town. But these are the things I can now do. And you can too. And you're going to have to say, how can I not only have a good product, how can I not only have good service and a good client experience and something that really I'm passionate about and hope will please people and be profitable, how can I begin to create the performance that will attract people, draw them in, and bring me to the point where I can make an offer and they can say, that's a good deal.
And then their story, what they want out of life, and your story meet. There will be a number of classes and courses coming, and uh, I have taught this for years, that the best way to sell people is not to try and sell people. It's to tell stories. Here's a little line that perhaps you can think about. A truth told is good, but seldom heard. You know that. A uh, truth revealed, you show people something, has greater yield. And a truth discovered is best of all, because they discovered it themselves. And a truth imposed is no truth at all. And if you think that selling is trying to impose your truth on people who don't want to hear it, you're going to find that a hard life to live. But if you can think about the fact that you, with your passion, your energy, your creativity, the abilities that you have to be excited about something that is useful and helpful for other people, and yes, profitable to you, that's part of a life deal, then you may find that the entrepreneurial life will suit you just fine. But I want this to sit on your head. You need further coaching. You perhaps need to learn some more things. You need to be aware of things. And we'll talk about that. Is that you have to become a performer in order to be an entrepreneur. Think about that. And I bet you can do it. And you can probably do it better than you think you can. We'll talk more about that next on God Wants You to Be an Entrepreneur. Well, I hope you took some time to think about that. Uh, perhaps even to check that book out by my friends uh, uh, Joe and Jim. The Experience Economy, Work is Theater, Every Business a Stage. And then go and now Google or Bing or whatever else you do is storytelling and business. You will be overwhelmed as to how the really smart people are now discovering that storytelling is the way to do business. I tell people this. Storytelling is the only effective means of communication. You can give people data, you can give people information, but if you really want communication that affects people so they do something, it's storytelling. Again, just think about that. And uh, that means that perhaps that brochure and that flyer and what we simply call dead trees aren't nearly as effective as you think. Well, something else that's not as effective as you think is PowerPoint. In fact, I'm going to tell you right now, I never use PowerPoint. Perhaps I should sometimes, but one time when I actually was doing a presentation and I, I usually just simply have fun. I, have props, I have toys, um, I sometimes maybe have a chart or something like that. But after I had done that, a lady walked up to me and talked about a very powerful persona. And she walked straight up to me and looked me right in the eye and said, I really enjoyed your show, Stan. Well done. She said, I noticed you didn't use PowerPoint. And I said, well, no, I, I really don't do that. And then she paused and said, good for you. Because when you use PowerPoint, you give away your power. Good for you. And then she turned and walked out. <laughs> Let that sit on your head for a while. That's another story. And more and more we're discovering that PowerPoint is not. And I could probably have that. I could have some, I could have, this is my Cinematographer have things fly in, but I'm just going to do an old-fashioned thing. I'm going to use an old whiteboard. And this program is about the ACE acronym for being an entrepreneur. ACE. So perhaps you want to write that down and uh, think about it. Now here's what I'm going to talk about in ACE. I want that to be a reminder of the three great qualities you will need to be an entrepreneur. 
A. Perhaps, you know, <laughs> we'll do it the YMCA way. A. Attentiveness. Attention. The thing I've discovered about entrepreneurs is they really notice things a lot. They're very attentive. They're always looking at things. They're, they're kind of like a Sherlock Holmes detective. They're always saying, how could we do this better? Or I wonder why people are buying that. They truly have to develop the ideas and the skills to be very attentive. I find that they're very attentive to people. Uh, they really don't text. They really don't look at their iPhones. They are fully present to other people. They treat every person. <laughs> Very importantly, they're fully attentive. They notice things. They take notes. Uh, I have a hobby that somebody told me about that became part of my life. I was listening to a guy by the name of Wolfman Jack, a broadcaster of many years ago, and he simply said this, if you want to be good on the radio, you carry a notebook with you all the time because you never know when you're going to hear a good joke, a good idea, or something that will just come into your head, and if you don't write it down, you will lose it. Now, I have found that, really, that's true. Oftentimes, my best ideas come when I'm out walking, when I'm swimming, when I'm walking the dog, when I'm just relaxing. Uh, all of a sudden, an idea will come to me. Now, the nice thing is that uh, I don't even have to write it down anymore. Now I just simply pick up my iPhone and use the dictation or memo function and I just simply say it into the iPhone and I capture my ideas. Now I spend many years as a radio broadcaster and I would do sometimes three to four hours of a show every day. Now do you know what kind of work goes into a three to four hour radio show? You've got to get a lot of stuff. Well, that meant that I was always looking for ideas. I was always looking for things I could talk about or share with others. And what I have discovered about entrepreneurs is they are truly attentive people. They pay attention to a lot of things. And that's a quality you need to think about, attend to, perhaps pray for. Whatever you do to try and put a character quality in your life, that's one of them. C, they connect and they're creative. Now, as I pointed out, is you really want to be in situations with other people who can spark your creativity. That's why don't hang out with negative, cranky people. <laughs> Just don't do it. It's contagious and you will catch bad stuff. Snarky people, you know, sharky people, you know what I'm talking about. They think they're so cool. Those are bad folks for you. That's not just bad karma. That is bad, bad life and business. So hang out with people who enjoy, enjoy being creative and creating things. Watch TV programs if you watch TV about people who are creative. That's why sometimes I, I like to watch the programs about people who are doing remodeling of homes. Not that I could do it or want to do it, but it is fun to see how creative people work. So if you're an entrepreneur, you're always looking for ways to be creative. That's why oftentimes they read children's books. They do all kinds of things. Some of my best ideas come. I may even do a program based on something I saw in a movie. I'm always looking for ways that uh, I can be creative. One gentleman taught me this. He said, every day, sit down and see if you can come up with 20 ideas about something that people need or want. Just think about it. So if you want to be an ace, A-C-E, <laughs> did you catch that? You know, be the person who makes it happen. Attentive and creative. And you connect them. And then E, enthusiasm. Now the word enthusiasm, now this is very vital. 
The word enthusiasm, nothing happens without enthusiasm. Winston Churchill said success is going from failure to failure to failure with no lack or loss of enthusiasm. Hey, the word enthusiasm means entheos. It's Greek. It means to be filled with God's spirit. Enthusiasm is a spiritual quality. It's not just an emotional quality. It's a way of looking at the world. It's emotionally positive. Enthusiasm. And I really have found that to be in entrepreneurs. They are enthusiastic people. Almost optimistically out of touch so. Sometimes they're called dreamers, and they are. They are people of great enthusiasm. But more than that, the enthusiasm comes from energy. Now, here's a point. Nothing happens without energy. You need to sustain and create energy. That means you learn how to be full of energy. You eat right. You exercise. You emotionally and spiritually find yourself in places where you're seeking to be filled with energy. You avoid the VDPs. You know what VDPs are? They're very draining people. And they can, they can take all your energy. If you want to survive as an entrepreneur, if you want to live a life that is good, you need to understand that you are continually in the energy business. There you go, Ace. <laughs> Attentiveness, creativity, and energy. And that will help you kind of ace it when it comes to being an entrepreneur. I hope that was helpful to you. Let it sit on your head. Think about it. Now, how are you going to cultivate those qualities in your life and in your business so that you can have the ace in your pocket, in your deck, as you go out and seek to be a high-performing entrepreneur? I wish you all the best. As they say in uh, show business, break a leg, you know, knock them dead, <laughs> bring the house down, get a standing ovation. I hope that'll happen for you in life. And uh, we'll finish up next on God Wants You to Be an Entrepreneur. Well, it's time to put an end to the show and uh, a little bit of an epilogue, kind of a, an ending time. But as you will discover, the show goes on and it will go on. But this part of it will be a way to kind of put it in place for you so that you can make some decisions about life and how you're going to do your life. Now, as I said, this has been safe. Nobody should have been offended. Yes. I believe that God does want you to be an entrepreneur because entrepreneur means that you have freedom to create your own destiny. And I think God wants that. He wants you to be creative. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to live with less fear. He wants you to flourish. Oftentimes I've said this is what God wants for you. He wants you to be fearless. So yeah, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death itself, and I don't fear evil. He wants you to be fruitful. <laughs> he wants you to actually have good stuff come out of you, just like, you know, good fruit. It's real. It's sweet. It's productive. It does good things. And in effect, you flourish. Most people don't flourish in their job. They don't bloom. They don't really shine. Now the few who do in the job are those who've decided to take their job and turn it into an intrapreneurship. That's, they function as an entrepreneur within a corporation or within a situation. They live and think like entrepreneurs, even though they may not physically and personally and professionally and in terms of paycheck, live the entrepreneurial life. So that's what I want for you, that uh, you will have less fear in your life 
And you'll need that to be an entrepreneur. The second thing I want you to have is I want you to really feel you're accomplishing things. Yeah, that there is stuff that comes out of you that's good. That you can say, I did that. I created that. I remember one gentleman told me, after 35 years of working for a major organization, he simply said, I've got a good pension, and uh, I guess it was okay. But you know what? I look back and say I did my job, but I can't really think that I really achieved anything that's going to last. After I retired, they just found somebody else. And he went and continued to do what I had done. And if I walked back now, half the people wouldn't even know me, and it wouldn't really make any difference. He said, I guess I'm okay with that, but not really. I wish I had done something more. I wish I'd kind of followed some of the dreams. I wish I'd taken a few more risks. By the way, I'm going to be interviewing uh, later on a gentleman who simply says that to be an entrepreneur means that you're going to have to take risks. I would really encourage you to understand that risk taking is what a full and good life is all about. And the psychotherapist Carl Jung one time said, the greatest thing you can experience in life is to know that you are fully in the place just right, to realize the purpose you have and to live it out fully. Now, those are spiritual qualities. And that's why when I talk about entrepreneurship and God, I'm not trying to be some kind of a fool. I'm simply saying is spiritual qualities, transcendent dependence, all of those things go into what many people believe to be a successful entrepreneurial life. Now, does that mean everybody's that way? Of course not. However, what they have discovered is that those people who've started with nothing and created major companies, that these are three things they found. First of all, they were creative in how they did things. They saw and observed things people didn't. Secondly, they were loyal, often to their family, even though they may not have done the best job that, to their spouse, and uh, they oftentimes had a sense of the transcendent. Uh, they really thought that there was power and purpose beyond themselves. That's just what some of the stats and facts and figures show. So I would really encourage you now to take this time to think about. And I want you to watch this program again and understand that uh, you're not going to be in trouble. <laughs> if you decide not to be an entrepreneur, but you're going to need to live a life in which you think and act like an entrepreneur so that you can experience some of the fullness of life and business, that you can be fully alive as you were meant to be. And you know what? The God that I believe in wants that for you. So, I'm Stan Houston. The answer to my question is, does God want you to be an entrepreneur? It's very simply, it all depends. Maybe not, but I hope so. But I hope that even if it's not for you, there are things you can learn from that style of life and living that will help you serve others with great power, passion, precision, and purpose. And if you do, here's my promise. It will go well for you. And that's my closing thought to you. May you live a life an entrepreneurial life in which things go well for you. And that you really believe, as St. Julian of Norwich said, that if you do, all will be well. I'm Stan Houston. All the best to you. Hopefully we'll see you again. And bye for now.